1976, Tim Harding wrote a book on the Vienna game, and in chapter 6, he wrote, A game between Dracula and the Frankenstein monster would not seem out of place. The nervous reader should avoid this line with either colour and turn immediately to chapter 7. And he was talking about a line which Ali Reza Firuzja and Levon Aronian played in the Gold Money Asian Cup in 2021. And to this day, the line is known as the Frankenstein Dracula variation. So it's a variation of the Vienna game, which starts with knight c3, that characterises the Vienna game. We had knight f6 from Levon, and now this bishop c4 move. And here Aronian takes on e4. This starts the variation. It all gets quite wild now. So if you take this knight, black gets a good game with pawn to d5. You're winning back the piece, and you have the centre. If instead of taking, you take on f7, this is no good because although you misplace the king, once again after you take here, black sets up the big centre with advantage. So the way to refute this opening is by going queen to h5 here. So you threaten mate in one, g6 is no good or you chop on e5 and you're winning a piece. So knight d6 is the move, you cover f7, you hit the bishop which now retreats. And now you don't have time to go knight c6 here as black and hold this pawn which is attacked by the queen or else knight b5 is a really powerful response. This knight is overloaded basically, holding f7. If you try queen e7 to hold this one, then c7 falls with check. So you just don't have time for all this. Levon knows this, he develops with bishop e7 and now Firuzja chops on e5. So we had castles from black pawn to d4, knight to c6, and now the queen retreats to f4, it's important that it comes here and not to say g3, because from here it holds the f5 square. So now we had knight a5 from Aronian, going after the bishop pair immediately, and Firuzja plays in a really interesting way now. So the more usual way to play here would be just developing a piece, preparing to castle, accepting that you're going to lose that bishop. But he goes bishop to d5 now, a strange looking move that holds the bishop pair and he was maybe prepared for these c6 lines where the bishop then retreats back here and after the knight moves away you're setting up moves like pawn to d5 with good advantage. But instead of playing c6, Aronian immediately moved the knight away. Now the bishop dropped back here pre-empting c6 but Aronian didn't play c6. Then d5 would be nice, biting on that pawn, taking the space. Instead he went bishop to b4, really nice move. And here Firuzja missteps, so he should go knight e2, cover this knight and his pawn structure, prepare to castle the king, but okay it's hard to mix it up, black has basically equalised. But he loves to mix it up as we know, so he goes pawn to d5 instead, carrying on with that earlier plan, but this does allow Aronian to chop on c3 here, and after the pawn recaptures, he plays pawn to b6. Completely different way to develop that queenside bishop, but really positionally astute, because this diagonal is now going to be a big problem for white, along with this c4 square. So knight to e2 now came, we had bishop to a6, castles from Firuzja, and queen to f6 from Aronian. He's very happy to exchange queens, go into the better end game with the better pawn structure. So Firuzja dodges that, he comes across to a4 here. You couldn't really keep the queen on the king side there, or then queen to g6 comes and the exchange is basically being forced. So he hits this pawn here, but Aronian actually just ignores that. He goes knight to d6, excellent move, fully mobilizing all of his pieces, giving Firuzja this pawn, then the rook swings across to the centre of the board and we can see a big difference here between the activation of the black pieces and the development of the white pieces. So bishop e3 is what Firuzja had anticipated, he blocks the file here, we note that there was a lot of pressure against that knight and after the knight jumps in here the move he had planned was bishop to d4 so he comes out of that knight's attack with tempo against the queen and you could move the queen away here, say to g5, that is still better for black, but Aronian finds an even better response, knight into e5. 
So he forks queen and bishop here, as we can see. Now you could take this knight with the dark squared bishop, but then you're just a little bit worse without counterplay, not what you want. So instead, Firuja drops the queen back. He lets Aronian pick up here with check, shattering the pawn structure, but after queen g5 check, moving away from the bishop, king h1, he is now picking up counterplay against the g7 pawn. And now Aronian goes wrong. It's actually surprisingly difficult to defend this g7 pawn. Best here for black are ideas connected with bishop c8, attacking the white queen here and forcing a trade of queens in these lines. Instead, Aronian plays the very natural takes on d5 here. This is a rapid play game, I should say. But after rook to g1, he now actually has massive problems defending g7. So he plays pawn to f6. Now you can't take here with the bishop because obviously the rook recaptures, but what you can do is come crashing through in another manner. So if you want to pause and look for it, then please do so. So the move to play here that Firuja didn't play, unfortunately, is rook takes on g7. Fantastic move, removing a defender there. And after rook g1 check, king h8, white has big problems after knight f4. All the pieces are flooding into the attack. And there's a threat to check here, taking advantage of this pin. And the key thing here is that there's no rook g8, or that leads to bishop takes on f6 and it's mate in four. So best here is to drop the queen back to f7, and now you get a line like this. The king has to step to the g file and you're picking up the queen with this discovery. Once the smoke has cleared, white is actually a little bit better with the active pieces. The queen is better than the two rooks here. But okay, it's deep stuff. It's not easy to just sack your rook on g7 like that, especially when you don't have time. So if you rouge to goes knight f4 instead, similar idea, but not quite the right execution because now queen f5 comes getting these queens off the board if you're not careful. So queen h6 looks to keep the attack going, but now rook f7 covers that g7 square. Rook g3 looks to double, but now queen takes on c2 is very strong. Not because you're picking up an insignificant pawn, but because you're freeing up the f5 square for this knight to come here, and then you're going to fork town as we can see. So if Yerusha has to respond to this, if he doubles the rooks, knight f5 is very strong. Instead, he goes like this with the knight. Knight f5 is still very strong, however, but what he'd set up was this. Knight takes on f6 with check. Now the rook recaptures. You can't immediately take with the queen here, or you're dropping your rook with check. That's no good for black. But what you can do is crash through on g7 like this. The knight recaptures, and then you take here. Now, if we take stock of the position, white is a whole piece down, so you have to crash through now. Queen g6 came back to defend. Rook g1 attacks that queen and all the pieces behind it. And the only thing you now have to be careful of as black is don't take here, because after bishop recaptures, now you've got problems, you're losing this knight. There's no rook e7 to hold it, because obviously the bishop's holding that square. But of course, Aronian didn't play like this. He played the one move in the position to keep the advantage, crush the game. And if you want to pause it and look for it, please do so. So he played rook takes on g1, and this was the final move of the game. Firuja resigned. He resigned because if you recapture here, rook e1 check comes, king g2, and bishop f1 check. Now if you step back here, this is actually mate. And if you step up the board like this, then knight h4 comes. You're forking these two pieces, game is gone of course. If you enjoyed this game, then do subscribe to the channel to never miss another video. And to see Firuja destroy rapport, click here. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.